In October of 2018, two seemingly healthy babies were born in China. There was something different about them. Nana and Lulu were the world's first gene-edited babies. A scientist, He Jiang Kui, had used the gene editing technique CRISPR-Cas9 to alter their DNA when they were embryos. He targeted a gene, called CCR5, with the goal of making them resistant to HIV. While some praised this development, the overwhelming sentiment was outrage. Most scientists questioned the ethics of altering the human germline, and many also pointed out that the procedure wasn't medically justified. John Kui was put on unpaid leave, and the Chinese government established an investigative committee and promised to punish anyone who had broken laws. Gene editing could be used to wipe out diseases, but it could also be used to augment humans, altering intelligence, athletic ability, vision, appearance, and more. This could forever change what it means to be human. Can we expect a future of gene edited designer babies? Do we want one? Humans have been manipulating the genes of plants and animals for thousands of years through selective breeding. Generations of breeding have resulted in plants and animals that are very different from their wild ancestors. You see the results of this genetic manipulation every time you buy groceries or encounter a cat or a dog. However, directly editing an organism's DNA has only been possible since the 1970s. Genetic engineering was difficult and expensive until a series of breakthroughs were made around 2010. Scientists figured out how to use CRISPR-Cas9 to make specific edits to the genetic code. With CRISPR, ailments such as cancer, sickle cell anemia, Huntington's disease, and muscular dystrophy could become a thing of the past. Victoria Gray of Mississippi is participating in a clinical trial of a CRISPR therapy to treat sickle cell anemia. Since undergoing treatment in July 2019, Victoria has improved remarkably. In 2020, she flew in a plane for the first time something her disease had kept her from doing before. And she's not the only one. A growing number of CRISPR trials have reported positive results. But as John Cree's experiment showed, CRISPR modifications aren't only for adults who can provide informed consent. Using CRISPR, scientists could edit embryos more easily than adults, avoiding serious genetic diseases. But deciding what counts as abnormality or a disease to be cured or avoided can be incredibly challenging. For example, CRISPR might make it possible to prevent anyone from being born with Down syndrome. Down syndrome almost always results in intellectual or physical disabilities, as well as a diminished life expectancy. Is it ethical for parents and healthcare professionals to decide to edit an embryo to eliminate this disorder? Would it be ethical if everyone made that same decision, resulting in no more Down syndrome babies? What would it mean for humanity to lose that diversity? What about deafness, blindness, baldness, Asperger's syndrome. What counts as normal? Is normal always good? On the other hand, would it be ethical to not edit an embryo to prevent avoidable intellectual, physical, and social impairment? Though the ethical questions are far from resolved, the science is advancing rapidly. Today, CRISPR-Cas9 gene editing is cheap and easy enough that people can do it in their own homes. We do not recommend this. In 2017, Former NASA researcher and biohacker Josiah Zayner became the first person to attempt to modify their own body using CRISPR. On stage at a synthetic biology conference, Zayner used CRISPR in an effort to knock out the myostatin gene, a change which boosts muscle size in lab animals. Zayner said his intention was to start a conversation about the possible uses of CRISPR technology and not just to increase his muscle mass. He then went on to sell CRISPR home editing kits. While the idea of people using CRISPR to edit their own genome can be alarming, the ethics and impact of edits to embryos intended for birth raises significantly more concerns. The edits made to Nana and Lulu were germline edits, meaning they could be passed down to their descendants. A decision to edit the germline wouldn't affect just the individual recipient, it would affect an untold number of future humans as well. There is also a question of off-target effects. Studies published after the John Cui affair indicate that attempted edits of human embryos frequently result in the deletion or rearrangement of large swaths of DNA, with unknown and potentially disastrous results. The risks and unknowns did not stop the birth of Nana and Lulu, and they may not stop future births either. For now, scientists largely reject the idea of modifying the human germline, even if it's technically possible. But that doesn't mean there won't be more germline edits carried out in secret perhaps by governments or groups that see augmented humans as a means of dominance and power. In fact, 
Broad moratoriums on editing embryos intended for birth could make the mastery and use of these technologies all the more valuable for those willing to move forward with it. After all, a war in which CRISPR augmented super soldiers face off against standard humans hardly seems like a fair fight. Unequal access is also a concern. Today, affluent families can afford private schools, training, tools, equipment and opportunities to set their children up for success. What if wealthy parents could not only buy the best schooling available, but also pay to boost their child's intelligence and athletic ability, all while limiting their susceptibility to injury and illness? The divide between the rich and the poor could become even more pronounced, limiting potential for upward mobility and creating clear genetic differences between classes. A brave new world, indeed. On the other hand, couldn't we all potentially reap the benefits from advances made by augmented humans? Humans with enhanced intelligence could be better able to cure cancer, solve the problem of aging, and address our economic and environmental woes. If the augmented were to solve some of humanity's grand challenges, it would improve the lives of all humans, augmented or not. By delaying augmented humans, we could unintentionally delay solutions to pressing problems facing humanity, perhaps even until it's too late. To edit or not to edit, whatever we choose, the consequences are very real and very serious. So, what do you think? Are designer babies the future? Should they be? Share your thoughts in the comments below and join the broader conversation as we collectively decide how to integrate this technology into our societies and cope with its consequences. Like, follow, subscribe, and catch us next time to see how you, plus science, can help save the world.